Hey everyone, excited to have you all back. Look at the emojis flying right off the bat. Hello. Sorry, we're starting a little bit late for everybody. We're super excited to kick this off. We've got a couple of amazing coaches, Samantha and Sammy. Again, I think every single time I join one of these sessions and I get the, the two Sams, it's, it's going to get me. And I love that it worked out that way. Uh, so welcome back, everyone. Um, so we know that a lot of you have been morphing into your teams. Know that this week we'll want to make sure that we get everyone settled. We're still definitely moving around some people. We know these experiences are a little bit different in terms of anything you might have done from a course and class and know that you're going to be developing a lot of really cool skills that come out of this by the time you complete it. Some soft skills, which employers want, definitely those hard skills. And you may or may not have known this, you're going to build some entrepreneurial mindset as you go through this as well, which employers love. So um, we're super excited to have some fun as we go through the session. Here's how this is going to work. Um, quick overview of, again, the core principles as we go through this. In these live sessions, as we mentioned, you will be interviewing somebody. So you're going to actually take on some of those soft and hard skills at the same time of conducting a stakeholder interview for the session. We'll talk a little bit about how it's going to work, and we'll give you 35 minutes to do this together. Um, and we'll share a little bit about how that works with this. Um, Samantha and Sammy are going to give some tips of how they might go through the interview. We're going to save about 35 minutes for everyone to actually ask questions to Samantha, who will be Julia Gray again, Director of Security and Compliance at Uber. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. And then um, we would definitely want to save some time for feedback and Q&A. All right, so Sammy and Samantha, at the end of it, we want to turn it into a conversation. What were some of the good questions? What were some things that could be approved on? So that if you ever did get to meet your potential stakeholder, you'd have be armed with some of the information that'll get you there. Cool. As a reminder, or click principles, we get to learn from each other. So if you think it's a bad question, we think it's a great question, bring it up on stage, make sure you ask it because we all get to learn from each other. And again, don't be bashful, this is a safe space, right? You can try anything if you wanna figure out how you might've actually asked a specific question and if it's a right question or not, try it here. This is the best place to do it. And of course, especially in these, we get to all have a little bit of fun as we go through the experience. Cool. Um, so I'll kick it back to Anissa as a reminder for what we're about to do in this particular session and in and the scenario again, and particularly for the red team. So Anissa, do you want to again preface what what it is about to happen? Yeah. Um, so again, just friendly reminder. Um, you know, I hope you guys all got a chance to either attend our kickoff session or watch the recording if you didn't. Um, but a quick reminder: our scenario is that Uber suffered a data breach. You guys are security analysts at SecureWorks, and you're coming into Uber's headquarters to perform a vulnerability assessment. First step of that is a stakeholder interview. That's what's happening today. So the interviews that are happening today are odd teams, so 1 through 11 odd numbers. Um, and your team, you're focused on the red team side of things. So this means that when you were formulating your questions, you should have thought of what would an attacker do to try to literally exploit those vulnerabilities and try to break through those defenses. So today in your interview with Julia Gray, who is the director of security and compliance, she's the best person who knows all the ins and outs of security at Uber. So pick her brain, ask her all the questions that you need to conduct your vulnerability assessment and to property, properly tell Uber what they need to fix, right? So one, you're trying to find vulnerabilities and two, remediation. You're trying to find ways to fix it, right? Because you can't provide a problem unless you provide a solution. So think about that. Um, I think that's about it um, regarding the scenario, but I do want to pass to Samantha and Sammy to kind of provide some tips on how. Let's one sec it. before oh, yeah, we, we get into that, because we definitely will is um, Elizabeth, I see you raise your hand. If you raise your hand to ask questions, that's awesome. If not, message me <laughs> and unraise your hand. But everyone who's done this, now is the time. We want you to raise your hand and everybody get in the queue so that we can see how many people are gonna be asking questions. Again, for everyone, nice, perfect, Elizabeth, that's awesome. Um, so this is gonna be the time for you to get all the information to set up the project, right? So we want everybody to come up on stage, ask those questions that you drafted, raise your hand, build the queue. Otherwise, if it's just Elizabeth asking questions, you're gonna conduct the whole stakeholder interview. So really important for everybody to go through this, ask your questions during the session. Um, and as we're building the queue, nice, Esther, great. 
Thanks. Awesome. And just um, before that, actually, Jeff, just yep. really clear, guys, use the raise hand function in AirMeet just so I can see it. Because even if you do it in chat, I might lose track of it. So yep. use that raise hand feature so I can see them. Thanks, Hakeem. So I've got three people so far, which is great. Perfect. Awesome. 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 They keep coming up. Love it. All right. Uh, perfect. So let's go ahead and go to um, Samantha, right? Um, Samantha and Sammy interviewing a stakeholder, right? Any kind of tips that they should think about as they're going through and asking the questions? I would say just be very clear of what you're asking. Um, just always take notes if this was a real live um, interview and just making sure that you are as prepared as you can be and just clear on the questions of what you're actually asking and don't feel like you have bad questions. Any like, don't feel like that. Every question's good. So yeah, that's it. And good luck. Awesome. Sammy. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, exactly what Samantha said, just make sure that you ask everything that you need to ask just coming in so that you can, you know, do the needful in your job from your end. And um, there are no bad questions. So good luck to everyone today. Awesome. So we've got Esther and Elizabeth in the queue, which means everyone has a lot of time to probably ask a lot of your questions. We definitely recommend people coming up on stage, raise your hand, get up on stage, shake some of those nerves off. Like I said, this is as good of an environment as you could possibly get to be able to go through this. Um, Claudia, love it. Keep them Claudia, coming. Claudia, love it. Yep. And without going... Now is time to go ahead and get started. So uh, me and Anissa will manage this. Uh, Elizabeth, we're gonna bring you up on stage to go ahead and ask um, your stakeholders some questions. Hi, hey, Elizabeth. can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Okay, yeah, so I'm trying to share my screen. Oh, okay. let me stop. Yeah. So I'm Julia, guys. So I'm the stakeholder. Yep, Samantha is Julia. Yeah. So Elizabeth, no, no need to share your screen. You can actually just ask yeah. the stakeholder questions. Oh, okay. Because um, we actually prepared the questions and ranked them and provided like justification as to why we are asking the questions. Yeah. So you should think of this yeah. as like actually conducting the interview. Yeah. So, so go ahead and just ask okay. the questions as you're, you know, uh, interviewing a stakeholder. Okay, and you then. can feel free to explain it too, Elizabeth, if you feel okay. necessary. Okay, then. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, and I'll be presenting on behalf of Team One. That's the red team. And um, we do have some questions that we are prepared to ask um, Julia Gray, the Director of Security at Uber. And we also try to rank our questions and provide a justification as to why the questions are important to us as attackers, because we hope to find the vulnerabilities and loopholes within the organization. So the first one I'll be asking is, um, it's about third party relationships. So we understand that a substantial number of data breaches occurs because of a third party vulnerability. And we expect that Uber would have outsourced some aspect of his service fulfillment to third party service providers like internet service providers, original equipment manufacturers, and cloud service providers like Amazon, Microsoft, and some others. So the first question, does the organization Uber document its relationship with third party vendors? And are the risk managed across the entire life cycle of the, of the third party relationship with these vendors? And by this, I mean, it includes um, like conducting due diligence on third party vendors by evaluating their cybersecurity program. All right, I think that was like three questions. <laughs> 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 but let's, um, can you ask the first part if you don't mind, did you say I have third party vendors? So we just wanna be yeah, asked- so does here. Uber document its relationship with the third party vendors? Okay, I would say yes. Uber does, but we haven't updated the document for about three years now. Okay. So, um, and at the risk managed across the entire life cycle of third party relationships. So by this, I want to know, but from your answer, I can see that you managed, um, like when you're signing up a vendor, but obviously you do not manage across the entire life cycle if you haven't updated that record for about three years. Yeah, I haven't managed it at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So um, the second question 
is on um, Uber's asset and data classification. So we understand that data classification would help um, a business like Uber to prioritize its data protection efforts and to improve data security and regulatory compliance. So my questions in this category, one, does Uber have a data classification? Mm, somewhat. We have some things we classify, but not everything in our inventory. Okay, so the mission critical data, is it encrypted and backed up off-site? Yeah, we do backups daily in it. There is encryption on all the devices. Okay, and so this leads me to the third question. Uh, which is on cybersecurity program, the awareness and compliance. So I would like to know, are all the employees trained about general cybersecurity best practices like phishing, password policies, multi-factor authentication, and some other general cybersecurity hygiene practices? So we have an annual training that happens once a year where they have to complete and get a cybersecurity certificate, but it only happens once a year. Okay. Just want to say it. Thank you. Awesome. I'm beginning to and, see some of the vulnerabilities. So, and also, hey, Elizabeth, <laughs> so um, one thing we want, we want to let everybody else come through here. So what I'd ask is okay. uh, we'll, we'll pass it over to Esther. Keep your questions that you might still have by the end of it, because if it is just the five of you have to raise your hand, there'll be more time. Um, great initial questions. Okay. We'll get some more feedback here. Uh, Esther, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the client and then uh, ask some of the initial questions that you you and your team have? Yes. Hello, Esther. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, you're good. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Julia Gray. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks for I'm asking. Great, great too. So I'm part of the team on the red team that are analyzing the, the issue at um, Uber and um, would like to ask you some questions. Myself and my teammates, we prepared some questions. We'd love to ask you some questions just to know where the, the problems are, what the vulnerabilities are, the weaknesses in your system. So my own question I would like to ask is, um, how often are the system logs reviewed? Every three days. Every three days. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, let me see if there's a question. Will it be possible for us to take a look at your uh, system logs to review it to know exactly when the breach happened? Because three days is like 72 hours gap. So, they, they might have missed something. Maybe you know the window at which the the attack happened. So is it is it okay for us to take a look at the system logs and um, review what um, when exactly the breach happened? Yeah, I can send over the logs. And you yes. guys can analyze them. Uh, thank you. Then I want to know as well, um, what kind of data do you think were were breached in the in the attack? I would say user activity. There was some people using the account that don't even work for Uber anymore. Okay. Okay, so from your response now, we can deduct that um, maybe there was no access and privilege and management review when, um, when um, employees leave Uber. Yeah, so, so yeah. That's, that's another breach here. Access and privilege management. Okay, then onboarding and offboarding should be properly done. Offboarding. Yeah. Okay, so let me look at. I want to see again. Um, what um, do you have multi-factor authentication enabled in your yeah. in your system? Oh, yeah, multi-factor. Yeah, we do have MFA. MFA enabled. Oh, oh, oh. So I wanted to ask as well. Do you have mobile device management policies at Uber, like um, when um, employees they come in with their mobile personal phones, are they permitted? Do they have access to log into your network with their mobile phones with their personal devices? 
We have some policies around bring your own device, but they haven't been updated since COVID began. Okay, that's another vulnerability. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Julia Gray. I'm going to allow um, part of my teammates as well to to look at to ask you more questions. Yeah, thank Great. you. Thank you, Esther. Esther. So Ulysses, we'll actually bring you up since you, you, you're both on the same team. Um, and then after that, we'll have Claudia and Hakeem. Great job, Esther. Thanks, Esther. Hello. Um, so uh, my name's Ulysses. So we're part of Team 11. And um, one of the other questions that weren't asked was, um, which systems are least administered? Um, there's, you're saying what systems are, aren't administered? administrated at all yeah or which one are the least administered in that like spectrum <clears throat> i honestly don't know some systems i feel like they're all administrated on a daily basis so i don't know which one's the least administrated okay um what potential uh, vulnerabilities concern you the most um having users access from different devices um, and not their encrypted devices. So I don't think everything's encrypted. I'm not sure. Uh, do you have any data loss prevention policies? Yes, they just haven't been updated in three years as well. Updated yeah, in three years. Um, so we have, uh, so this is like a main question with uh, sub questions. So what are the current processes for security? So the first question will be, how often are the employees trained? Oh, that question has already answered those um, every, once every year, right? With their cybersecurity certification. Yeah. Uh, so what are your password management policies? So how often uh, do employees have to change the password? Every 90 days, a password has to get updated. So we enforce the system to make them reset their passwords. And then, um, do they have any? This is from uh, one of my other um, teammates. They asked, do they have any IDPS effective systems, and how do the administrators get alerted? Mm, I'm not sure about that. I would have to look into that. And then, as the red team, will the are there be any assets that we don't have? We don't have any access to. Answers. Any access or assets that we don't have any access to? Um, no, I think you guys have access to everything. And our last question was, uh, what is your budget for this assessment? Um, 10 million. <laughs> That's a lot of cheddar. <laughs> it's Uber, they got it. <laughs> Great, Ulysses. Love it. Thanks, Ulysses. Yeah, Great. thank you. Those were awesome questions. Um, cool. So I'm going to pass to Claudia right now, and then Hakeem, you will be after Claudia. So let me invite Claudia up. Hi, everyone. Hello, Hello. Claudia. How are you guys? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm going to be asking questions related to the vulnerability assessment. And my first question is, what security products do you already have in Uber for vulnerability assessments? For example, firewall intrusion detection, encryption, and what security measures are in place? So we do have firewalls. We have... Um... Encrypti encryption, we have some cryptography and some other data backup devices in place. Thank you. And what is, where are your servers located and what are the access controls in place? And is there a list of personal access levels? So we do have least privilege Control. Um, could you, you guys hear me? I, got, I keep getting. Could you say that again? So um, we you... have the access management control and some other things on our database. Okay. 
Can you repeat the ending part, please? Yeah, we do have a couple of access management controls in place um, on a couple of our databases. Okay, thank you. And how are your employees and contractors trained in security best practices? Once a year, they had to take a cybersecurity course about phishing and all the security awareness trainings. And what are your current techniques for safeguarding passwords and client information? So passwords need to be updated 90 days. Um, there have to be at least 10 characters with special characters as well. And do you have a list of assets that are owned? Some of them. I don't know if I have all the assets. And what are the policies for data segregation? Uh, we have some SOD um, segre segregation of duties policies based on roles and responsibilities. Some policies around that. Thank you. And do you um, perform regular backups? And is it all data or only business critical? We have some backups every three days. Um, it's just on the critical systems. And does Uber update the third party vendors? Um, yeah, we usually update third party. I don't know how often. I think we do it like um, monthly. Perfect. And is, what would be your biggest concern in regards to data vulnerability? Just nervous that people can access, um, people who have left Uber can still access Uber um, client information. And what are your current processes that you think are working well? Mm, I would say our stuff around access management is pretty well. We try to keep it, um, we try to review the logs um, daily. It depends what logs, but I would say that's going well. And for your position, what is your biggest pain point? Um... I guess there's a lot with Uber. I would say the biggest pain point is my budget around this. Okay. And for your workers? The pain point with my workers? Correct. Um, making sure they're trained and stuff. Sometimes I'm not sure if they took the training once a year because we don't have anything that shows that they did it or not. Just is training them. in person or online? Online. And how many workers approximately? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, All right, I'm going to pass it, Claudia, just to get Hakeem, Ging, and Candice, and then um, I'll bring it. Just save your questions that weren't asked, Claudia, and then we can bring you back up at the end. Um, okay. I'm going to pass to Hakeem if you don't mind, but again, please save your questions and then we can pass so everybody gets a chance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great question, Zobe. You killed it there. Um, awesome. So Hakeem, I am going to pass to you. There we go. Hello. Can you Hello. all hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, uh, just have a few questions. Um, I heard earlier that you do have uh, encryption on your data, is that correct? Yes. Okay, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what encryption standard do you use? Hmm, I'm not sure. Okay, fair enough. Um, and I'm not sure if I heard this, but if I didn't, I would like to ask if you have uh, IoT devices that are connected to your internal network? Yeah, we have some devices connected to our internal, but not all of them. But not all of them. Okay. And are these devices uh, things like uh, internet-enabled printers? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you have packet capture software across your network or on critical infrastructure? Just on critical infrastructure, not across the network. 
not across the network. Okay. And do you have uh, automated alerts enabled? Yeah, I think I get automated alerts, but I don't manage them. Do you know who does? Uh, yeah, I could send you over the POC for that. Thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, yeah, and no problem. And and what if you know off the top, uh, what 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 are the criteria for some of the alerts? They should be reviewed daily, but some of, some of the alerts are only reviewed every three days, so it just varies based on the alert. Okay. Um, and last, I would like to ask if you have any legacy systems that do not have tech support. Yeah, we have a couple of those systems that are just so old, but we haven't got rid of them. And do those systems surround any critical infrastructure? I would have to check. I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Hakeem. That's great. Cool. Um, all right. After Hakeem, passing to Ging. And then after Ging is Candice. And then after Candace, we don't have anybody else. So I'll redo our list if anybody else doesn't volunteer, but uh, still taking other volunteers as well. But go ahead. <clears throat> okay. My voice might be a little hoarse. I apologize for that in advance. No. Um, so I actually want to ask, go back to like the, the nature of the data breach. So, so as I understand it, um, Julia, you stated that um, basically you're concerned about because former employees still are still accessing their accounts. Is that what yeah. it is? Yes. Are they doing anything? So what in addition, anything in addition to like just that activity or? Um, yeah, just I just see some user activity. It's nothing critical around payroll or anything, but it just looks like they're still accessing the system. And I don't know what they're actually doing. So can I ask, may I ask like why they still have access to their accounts? I'm like, not sure. I they... thought they were off boarded, but apparently they still have access. Okay. And so and when was a problem first detected? Um, about a year ago. Okay. And do you have any sense of like um, how long the problem had been already taking place? I mean, I guess maybe since employees were first released or whatever, but or quit. But um, yeah, yeah. So how long had the problem been taking place before it's discovered? I'm not sure. We only found out a year ago. And we're going through user activities to see when their last last logon date was. Okay. And then um, that's when I'll just uh, make sure I heard you correctly. So I think you're asked basically like what your concern, what, what your biggest concern is around um, the cybersecurity. And you basically said like the, the problem that's at hand, that people are accessing their um, accounts, even though they're no longer no employees. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, okay. So in terms of former employees, are we talking about like, like like the drivers as well. Are we talking about actually like more like the sort of um, the the full time staff? It's mainly the drivers and the, uh, people that work off site. So like the okay. drivers, not the, so it is the drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then okay, my last question really is um. So do you have a like a current like cybersecurity plan in place that you're sort of um? Yeah, it just hasn't. Sort of been reviewed in like three years. Um, so we're currently going through the process to update the form. Okay. Oh, and actually one last question. So and I think you answered it, but I, I don't think I heard the uh, answer um, clearly, but um, so do you, do you actually currently um, have like an inventory of all the company equipment that folks might be using like computer laptops, tablets, cell phones, anything like those along those lines? We try to have a good um, inventory list, but I feel like we're missing some of the devices. Okay. Oh, maybe one question. Yeah. So you said like employees actually do go through like um, an annual training around cybersecurity, but it's online and, and, and then basically their participation is not recorded. Um, can I ask why that is? I don't know. I guess we just haven't gone through the process to make it mandatory. We just say, please take this annual training, but we don't make it mandatory. Oh, I see. It's not mandatory. I got yeah. it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gang. Awesome. All right. Uh, passing it to Candice. And just so you guys know, we're probably going to wrap up questions um, you know, within five to 10 minutes or so. So um, after Candice goes, um, actually, I hope, did I just reject her on accident? Hold on. Candice, if I just rejected you, it was a total accident. 
There we go. I did. I'm so sorry. It was not on purpose. I was just, I cannot multitask. Um, but so after Candace, we'll take maybe one to two more volunteers. Um, but if not, if you asked a question before and you, uh, if we cut you off and you want to ask again, um, if your question was not asked, now would be the time to do that after Candace. I also want to make sure we leave time just for feedback. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, let, let's, let's get through look, maybe one to two more questions after Candace and then we can pivot to feedback. Awesome. Perfect. Go ahead, Candace. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Hey, yes. Candace. Hi. So I just want to do the introduction because I feel like we left that out in, in a lot of them. So I'll do that and then probably ask just a couple of questions since a lot of them were kind of asked, but what we what wasn't asked, I'll try to ask those. Okay. Okay, so hello, Ms. Gray. Um, thank you for agreeing to speak with me today. I'm Candace, a cybersecurity analyst with SecureWorks. It's nice to meet you, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Uh, so the reason for today's interview um, is because my team, the Red Team, and I are working to gather important perspectives and existing knowledge about users. <laughs> Solution, their vulnerabilities, etc. And we are hoping to leverage your expertise, um, sort of establish success metrics and gather any other insight that you think may be helpful before we begin working on the project. So in turn, I'm just speaking with stakeholders in the organization this week to get your perspectives on the current experiences. Um, so thank you again for meeting with me today. We're excited to get your perspective as well. Um, so I'll start by asking you a few questions just to get your feedback and input. There are no right or wrong answers. Um, feel free to be open and honest with me. Just so you know, anything you share today will not be distributed or associated back to you. Um, you also won't hurt my feelings with any negative feedback or anything of that nature. We are simply trying to gather information so that we can learn today. And the interview will be about 10 minutes. Is that acceptable with your schedule? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So I'll start off with a sort of general question just to get a baseline of where your security is um, with an Uber. So in terms of defining Uber's overall cybersecurity level, how do you identify which threats are most important and how do you prioritize them accordingly? So we have a risk, the risk sheet that has low, medium, and high critical vulnerabilities. So we tend to use that. We manage all our threats in a Splunk database on the Uber site. So that's how we can track which threats and all that. Okay. Um, it sounds like you utilize Splunk, which is a SIN um, tool. And that is where you log your information. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, and per my research, it appears that the data breach that Uber recently experienced was due to an attack via social, um, social engineering. Um, what tools in that department and policies does Uber have in place to address, let's say, high-risk alerts, uh, social engineering weaknesses and exploits? So we haven't updated our document in like three years when COVID first started. I think we have some things around social engineering, but not as granular. So just on the basic side, but not anything in much detail. Okay. Any particular assets that you um, look to secure more than others? We try to uh, make sure their mobile devices are secure in their laptops, but that's about it. Okay. And so you said three years since you've updated. Yeah. Information. So what is your assessment as, as far as the level of readiness for your IT department at large to address security alerts and weaknesses? Probably once a year we do an assessment. Okay. And lastly, are there any, are you aware of any misconfigurations or any coverage gaps that exists within these products or tools that you're currently utilizing within Uber? We're going through the vulnerabilities, so I haven't found any gaps yet. So that's something I hope I will have an answer by next week with. Okay, well again, um, I won't take up too much more of your time and these interviews do help me gather any information that may be helpful in shaping the design process, um, define any metrics that we may need to further the 
the process for the project. So thank you so much again for taking your time out to speak with me today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Candice. You're welcome. Thanks, Candice. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to pass to Claudia and then Elizabeth, but one thing, I'm only going to say one question per person, um, just so we can just get through two final questions, take, you know, less than five minutes, then we can pass to the feedback portion. Um, so Claudia, just pick your most important question and Elizabeth, same for you. Same. Okay. Uh, what is included in your auditing and how do you dispose of sensitive data? Um, there's some security logs in our auditing, but um, not as much. I don't think we do a good job with disclosing some sensitive data. And how do you dispose of it? We, we, ha we don't really dispose of it. We're pretty bad at that. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thanks, Claudia. And finally, um, but not final, not least, Elizabeth, let's pass it to you. And then after that, we will just pivot to the feedback portion. So go for it, Elizabeth. Okay, so I wanted to also find out how are privileged access rights controlled? That's users yeah. that have privileged access rights. How are these controlled? So we have a privilege access control around user activity. So we try to um, do this monthly. We review the control monthly to make sure it's operating correctly. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Elizabeth. All right, folks. So I think that concludes our stakeholder interview. Um, with Julia Gray. So I just want to thank our red teamers um, who kind of came with a different lens and really were asking Samantha questions. Um, sorry, not Samantha, Julia. <laughs> not Samantha. We're talking to Julia. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to just pass to Samantha to now give feedback from an outside lens of what she thinks, you know, could have done better, what she thinks went really well. Um, and I'll probably provide some feedback as well. I also want Sammy to provide feedback intermittently here as well as, uh, you know, everyone's going through. But um, yeah, that's what the last, you know, 17 minutes will be for. So, Samantha, I'll pass to you and Sammy to assist. Thank you. Um, well, I just want to start off saying I loved all the questions. I think they're all good questions. Um, I did really like how Candace set up the stage really well. So good job on that. That was definitely something that stick to me. Um, the way you introed and then you gave the background. So it was very helpful to know, okay, what am I, what am I doing? You also thank me for my time. Again, you're talking to a stakeholder. She's probably very busy. You always want to be aware of their time too. So thank you for that. Um, I don't remember everyone's names of who went, but I think overall, um, I think it was Hakeem. He did a good thing with questions and it's always good. I, I liked how you guys also had like a follow-up question. So sometimes when the question's answered, it's like, oh, I, I need to ask this now. So don't feel like you have to have every question written down. So it's good to have like, oh, let me ask this because you do have their time. You don't know if you're going to get it again, but it's good to have that 20 minutes of time to ask whatever. So that was good. Um, I also liked how people were like, I'm taking notes. It's just good to know that they're listening. Um, they're engaged. Um, what else? I would say um, some things, I guess, not really critical feedback. This is just um, based on my experience. Um, just make sure um, if I'm like, I don't know this question, uh, try to ask, I think someone did this. They asked like, who is the, I think it was Hakeem, who's the POC for this that I can contact? Because sometimes you don't want to have no answer. You want to be like, okay, who can I contact to get that answer to the question? And if they can't provide that, no worries at all. It's just always good to um, ask that question so we can get the answer, if that makes sense. Um, what else? Yeah, I love follow-up questions. Um, just, I guess, do you have any feedback on the intro happening um, middle in the middle of the interview versus in the beginning or the end? When would you have preferred, um, you know, that kind of happen? 
Uh, of course, I would say intro always in the beginning and also saying, hey, I'm Samantha Kapoor. I'm a cybersecurity analyst. Like list right. your role too. So they know who you are. It's like, why is this mm-hmm. person asking me questions? So they know who you are too. So I'd always intro in the beginning and at the end, just wrap it up. Like, this is what we talked about to make sure you understand everything clearly. Cause there's been times where I thought she said something else and then I review it and I'm like, oh, she said every three days for this or something. So you want to also repeat what was yes. just said, just to make sure you understand everything. Mm-hmm. And just to add to that, I think doing the intro at the beginning kind of sets the tone as well, Mm -hmm. because you're an outside analyst coming in to this person who's associated with the company. So you want to make them comfortable when you're asking these questions and you want to kind of set that tone that it's a friendly conversation and you're you're trying to help them. So um, definitely, you know, I really like the way that Candace did that. And like Samantha said, you guys, great questions. Um, If you guys don't mind from my end, uh, I'll I'll put in a little bit of feedback really oh, quick please. while talking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I thought that you guys did a really good job, um, especially on the kind of umbrella questions. But one suggestion I have is to then, like when you're coming from that red team's pr- perspective, hone in a little bit more on like the red team related questions. I saw a lot of great questions on like their password policies and all that, but that's a little bit more blue team and DRC and compliance side of things within an enterprise. With red team, you really want to focus on like the system, the potential vulnerabilities that could be used by a malicious actor and from that kind of a perspective. Um, So, I mean, that's kind of my major feedback and takeaway that I want you guys to have from my end is that, like, when you're coming from that red team, think like a red teamer. Like, what would you do if you were coming and trying to break into the system of this company? Um, Yeah, I mean, that was that's pretty much it from my end. No, I love that. And and that's a good point. I mean, especially to now blue team, you're at an advantage because you can kind of take these questions, take this feedback, go back, talk to your teams, build on it even more. Um, but one other piece that I'll add that um, Samantha or Sammy didn't say that I thought Samantha nailed as Julia um, is usually when you're speaking to a director level um, stakeholder, they're going to have a lot of answers like Samantha said. I don't know. I have no idea. They're going to be very vague, and that's totally normal. And I love that Samantha did that. That's a very accurate representation, right? Um, So it's your job to probe, to be like, okay, well, you say that you don't know. Can you find out? Or when can you find out? Be very actionable. Like, you said you're going to give me the stakeholder, that POC, right? When can I expect for you to send me that? Will you email it to me? Do you have my email address, right? get hold the stakeholder accountable as well. Um, Because I will say my piece of feedback, especially as a security analyst, when I've had to do these assessments before, a lot of the times when I'm speaking to directors, they just want to get me out of the room. They just want to stop talking to me really quickly because they they don't have a lot of time. Um, So really holding them accountable as well. Okay, you said you're going to send this to me. When can I expect it from you? Like six months from now or tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just one piece of feedback for me is just that action item, just really being like, I need this. Can you get it to me? When yeah. can you get it to me? Why? And that's where the follow-up email too, like if they're, you're, you can put like actions or something in red that they know they have to like follow up on the question. So you remind them of what you just talked about too, in the thank you email or something. I think it's always good to end with a thank you and a recap of what you guys discussed. Yeah. Um, so I have a question here um, from Candace. So do we use open source prior to the interview and relay that information, like any sort of, you know, research done on the breach or anything like that? Good question. What do you guys, what are your thoughts? So I think you should definitely use open source to maybe find like publicly available information about the company. Like I know one of you guys was asking um, Samantha slash Julia <laughs> about, you um, the, like how many servers, where are they located? I mean, that's all probably stuff that you could find out by like a simple Google search and, you know, where the major, you know, servers for that company are located, especially a company as large as Uber, that is publicly available information. So that's something that um, doing some background research in open source would definitely help with. Um, But as far as prior vulnerabilities are concerned, um, I think like as 
an analyst coming in for this interview, uh, you need to kind of just focus on the task at hand and not keep, you know, referring back to, oh, this happened in your company before is, and that, that's what I think. So. Love that. Anything to add, Samantha? No, I agree. She said it perfectly. I think it's always good to do your research. So the less questions you have, or you can ask more specific questions like, oh, you have 30 servers based on this. And then you can actually ask more in detail. So good. Awesome. Um, and the follow up to that, do we send like a survey or an email after? Or what do you guys think about that in your experience? I would send a thank you email. I wouldn't send a survey. Um, I would just send a thank you email with a recap if I understood your question. I think that's what you mean. Only because surveys more of just your research perspective. So more of just like a recap of bullet points. Unless you need a survey as like yeah. your investigation. But I mean, otherwise, yeah, like Samantha said, a thank yeah. you email would suffice, you know, for their time and for, you know, maybe recapping what they went over over the interview, kind of like a meeting. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Um, and then I just want to address Syed's question. Um, so he asked, in our questions tomorrow, should we assume no questions have been asked already or should it be a continuation of today? So that's a good question. And, and just to preface, this is for uh, it's a, the exact same session as today, really, but it's just going to be the other teams, the blue teamers. Um, they're going to go through and ask those questions to Samantha. So. You can totally, you know, have duplicate questions. I would just put a different spin on it, right? So if you want to ask, like, let's take today's feedback and be like, okay, so your password management policy, right? Maybe ask a deeper question, ask a follow-up question or whatever you want. Um, but you can definitely, you should assume that you, you, because remember, you guys are all working together. You're all coming from SecureWorks. Um, so you have to work together in such a way. So that's why it's good that you guys were at today's session. So then you can kind of tailor your questions and build off of them or maybe reduce an exact duplicate um, and kind of continue that conversation, dig a little bit deeper. Good question, Syed. Cool. Um, any other questions, feedback, please drop it in the chat. Um, but Samantha, Sammy, just curious, like, what are the biggest pain points that you've experienced while trying to interview a stakeholder to, like, get these answers? Like, what's what's the biggest pain point that um, you would kind of say if you had to? I would say, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so um, I think mainly it's, it's what I mentioned with my comment as well, that, you know, there's an outsider coming into the company and this C-level or higher, you know, responsibility persons being interviewed about a potential breach, they're going to be a little bit defensive about it. And, you know, in, in my, like, um, I guess, experience, what I've noticed is, like, you kind of have to set the scene, make them at ease, and then pull the information a little bit. It's not so much as, you know, they're that willing to. And then there's a little bit of a behind the scenes legal involved as well. So they're a little bit, can I say this? Can I not say this? Is this okay? So there's going to be a lot of emotions and atmosphere that's already preset when you go into that interview. So <laughs> just to keep yeah. that in mind. Well said. Yeah, I would agree with what exactly she said. Like sometimes they don't even want to talk to you and don't take it personally or just ask very low level questions, not even high level into the details. Just just try to get a baseline. But yeah, I agree. Like sometimes they're just not going to want to talk to you. So don't feel like attacked or anything. It's just how, of what's going on and stuff. No, I love that. And like Samantha and Sammy just said to just to build off that, I mean, that's think about it. Like, remember at the end of the day, you're just talking to a person on a security team who just had a breach, right? If a security team just had a breach, they personally will take it as a failure, right? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, Oh my God, I let my team down. Like, so Julia is not going to talk to you. Like, yeah, we have, you know, 50 vulnerabilities. What are you going to do? Right. She's going to be a little embarrassed, a little timid, like, Oh God, like, like, I'm sure it was really embarrassing for Julia to be like, yep, we haven't updated in three years. You know, it's like, all right, hopefully you don't ask me anything more about that because I don't want to talk about it. Right. Um, so just remember, you're talking to people. Um, so think about it that way. Right. You're, you're not talking to a robot. You're talking to humans who just went through a breach. So you've mm -hmm. got to 
had that comfort. Um, something else that I, I want to see more in some feedback interviews are really just like, oh, you know, that's okay. We'll work with you to get that fixed. Or, you know, that's a common problem that a lot of organizations have. Um, so what, what do you guys feel about that, Samantha and Sammy, like putting in that human aspect? What are your thoughts there? I think reassurance definitely helps. I mean, because you also don't know what that person's going through from their management and their end. And, you know, like Anissa said, they just had a breach and they feel like it's a personal failure. So definitely um, just having some affirmation behind that, like, hey, we'll help you. You know, we can get that on board. We'll, we'll work this out. You know, we'll give you suggestions for this. That really helps. Yeah, just being mindful. And when you start, like Candace did, you, she, I think she said, I don't know remember word from word but she said something that made me feel comfortable like uh, I don't know but it was something where it was like if you don't feel like you have any bad answers or something just kind of making them feel more comfortable so I think that was good because that's fine to say to stakeholders sometimes they don't even know the answer so it's just always yeah hard. I think Samantha what she said was something like don't feel like your answers will offend me or anything like yeah. that yeah and that was great, Candice. That was just really like, okay, putting the, you know, remember, we're all human. It's okay. Like, we're just here to talk about your mistakes. Let's get to the bottom of it um, and really bring in that human aspect. Cool. So Candice had a question. Do we interview one stakeholder or several? Um, so Samantha, Sammy, what's your, uh, you know, take on that in your experience? Do you usually interview one person or is it a whole team? Um, what, what do you think there? Um like at one time or yeah like for the, for the stakeholder interview do you ever have multiple stakeholders or is it always just one it's usually multiple people mm -hmm. within the company um I, I mean but you won't i mean it's it's very rare you might interview like a board at, at some point in time but it's very rare that you'll be talking to multiple people at once like a panel it'll usually be like one-on-ones but there mm -hmm. there will be multiple one-on-ones it honestly just depends. It's not a right way or wrong way, whatever gets you the answers. So sometimes you have to talk to three people at one time. Sometimes you only talk to one person. So whoever has the answers to your questions. Yep. That, that's the key, Samantha. Whoever has the answers <laughs> to your questions. Sometimes you'll try to reach out to 16 people. None of them have your answer, but number 17 does. And mm -hmm. there you go. And that's okay. Like, but you have to, if you want the answer, you have to find it. You can't fault Samantha. You can't fault Julia. Be like, Julia, why do you not know this? Be like, okay, well, there's probably 900 other employees at Uber. So maybe you can reach out to Julia to ask her who or go find them and ask them yourselves, right? But do, and, and I forgot who said this, but do that open source research and find those people and, and whatever you need. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, Samantha, Sammy, any other thoughts or comments that you want to share about stakeholder interviews and or any other pieces of feedback came to mind that you want to share? Um, I mean, honestly, y'all did a great job with the questions. Yeah. So um, I was pretty you know, blown away by some of them. So good job on that. Yeah. Peace. And I would say I was nervous, like just <laughs> answering. So you kind of feel like, oh, do I know the answer? But you're also like an Uber person. So don't feel like you're, you're probably nervous and the stakeholder is nervous. So I just wanted to point that out. Like, don't feel like everyone has nerves. So it's OK. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Good point. Also, like to you guys, I'm sure really nervous. Like how what am I going to ask? Like this person's yeah. a director. I'm an analyst. Right. But remember what Julia's feeling. She's like, shoot, we just got a breach and they're trying to come in to fix it. What am I going to say to them, right? They're going to think I'm like an idiot. So yeah. there's going to be nerves on both ends. So again, that human aspect is just so important. Just remember you're talking to a, just another person, right? Just remember that. Keep that at the back of your mind. Love it. Um, all right, folks. Well, I think we're going to wrap up here because we don't have any other questions for now and we have a minute left. So I think this is a good wrap up point. But um, remember that tomorrow is our blue team um, interview. Um, so that is hold on. I'm just going to share my slide really quick. Um, so yeah, remember tomorrow is our blue team interview with Julia and that's going to happen, um, two o'clock Eastern. Um, so 11 o'clock 
Pacific. Um, and again, same setup as today, but it's just going to be the even number teams who are able to um, just come up and, and talk to Julian and build off of today's questions. Um, so want to really thank Samantha, a.k.a. Julia Gray, um, for, for being a champ and taking those questions. Um, I want to thank Sammy for being awesome and just providing that support and feedback. Um, and thank you guys, especially speakers. Thanks, Candice. Thank you, Ulysses. Thanks, Elizabeth, Esther, Hakeem. Did I miss somebody? Gang, I don't know how I'm just remembering these, but I'm never, I'm not going to remember it in an hour. So, um, but thanks you guys. Seriously, this was really great. The, especially um, all the behind the scenes work that you guys all did. I'm, I see you in Slack. I see all the work you guys are doing. Keep it up. This is an awesome team sprint. You guys are a great group. Um, so again, we'll see you guys tomorrow for the blue team stakeholder interview. Um, have a great night and keep working with your teams. Thanks everybody. Thank you.